Hello and welcome back to Mike's Place. Before I go into talking about the topic of relationships, um, I wanted to say a little something about thought over here and why I have this video on loop playing. And basically I have brain damage from um, some medication I was given at the hospital and I have uh, problems with my short-term memory and trying to remember when I'm what I'm talking about whenever I'm trying to talk so I have thought as a um, it's like a focus object um, so when I look at it it just kind of brings my thoughts back to the here and now so I can remember what I'm talking about okay so outside of that now on to our topic of relationships and if you look over here I have just the topic in bold letters and then under that I have it's it's basically three definitions for relationships and the N just means that it falls under noun as a usage so a connection by origin of marriage kinship etc so that would be like family or marriage relationship um, a relative of some sort just like cousin aunt uncle um, and then the third one says the connection between or among persons, nations, families, etc. So like I was saying, you could have um, relationships with individual people inside the family or outside the family. And then you also have relationships with um, like your employer or your employees or your um even like the convenience store that you shop at, the stores that you shop at used to have a somewhat of a um, associate to consumer relationship there. So there's many types of relationships outside of just um, like a partner relationship. But that's, that's kind of like what we focus on with this is mostly partner stuff and family related, which is not always, but partner relationships usually are for having children and families. And maturity plays a big factor in your relationships with others. Here are some things to consider. Um, these are basically just um, a few ideas on keeping mature in your relationships. One, the ability to control anger and settle differences without violence or destruction. And that, that one's, um, that's really, some people have a really tough time not being violent or destructive. And later on when I go into violence a little more, we'll talk about like different forms of violence that are used. And it's it's kind of hard to control all of them i mean it takes a lot of work especially if um like you've been taught to use some of them by people as you were growing up number two is patience the ability willingness to pass up immediate pleasure in favor of the long-term gain so that's basically that applies to more than just relationships too. just being mature and being patient enough to um, pass up immediate ple pleasure for something that you want in the long term as far as a relationship goes I, I guess that would be more like um, I guess if it was like a business relationship maybe putting off uh, any any kind of um, small talk until you can make some big moves which are like for long-term business three perseverance the ability to sweat out a project or a situation despite heavy opposition and discouraging setbacks and that's just whenever you um make make the dedication to stay long term with either a person or maybe it's like a um employment or career just sticking with it and going through with everything persevering to the end especially through opposition or setbacks because like sometimes those are just so so discouraging that it makes you want to give up 
four is the capacity to face unpleasantness and frustration, discomfort and defeat without complaint or collapse. So that goes with perseverance too, is just being able to go through the, um, the unpleasant situations, the negative, the negative with the positive. Um, feeling discomfort in, in that could be different in different types of relationships like you you could have maybe your parents yelling at you if you're a kid in that type of relationship that would make you feel um, uncomfortable and if it's the other way around like you could have your children yelling at your parents too and that's not very comforting it's not very mature either But basically just being able to go through the negative and stick to what you, um, the choice you made to begin with, which is like, if you're in a partner relationship, that's just being dedicated to that person and willing to go through the bad parts with them. Uh, number five is humility. The ability to say I was wrong and when right the mature person not need experience the satisfaction of saying I told you so um, yeah m you know m being mature does involve a lot of um, just kind of biting your tongue whenever you want to say nasty things because it's it's not nice and even even, um, even when you're out in the world somebody might do something rude and it could be just an accident but um, if you just like if you admit that possibly you were in the wrong if you were in the wrong and um not like egg the situation on provoking it by saying that they were so it's just it's just being able to admit that you were wrong and not not saying something like i told you so or it's it's your fault or um just being immature like that. Uh, six says the ability to make a decision and stand by it. The immature spend their lives exploring endless possibilities, then they do nothing. So um, it's, it's, it's basically the same thing as the perseverance, just making a decision and, and sticking to it. And uh, when I go into the parenting stuff a little later on, dealing with children, um making um promises that you can't keep is is a big thing to being like a to trying to be a good parent so you don't want to make promises that you can't keep and that's a situation where it's like a relationship you have with your child it doesn't really form a good relationship because you're making empty promises and you're not sticking to your word so they see you as like a liar <laughs> number seven uh, the dependability, dependability, keeping one's word, coming through in a crisis. The immature are masters of the alibi. They are confused and disorganized. Their lives are a maze of broken promises, former friends, unfinished business, and good intentions that somehow never seem to materialize. And this is just saying that um, it's, it's kind of pointing out that um, immature people are not dependable and then um applying that to like a relationship setting saying that if they weren't dependable on their own then they're probably not going to be dependable inside of a relationship and that could be like um dependability is really important when it's a when you're an employee and your employer wants you to be able to work on time so definitely important to be dependable um the immature masters of the alibi kind of like somebody's opinion but uh an alibi is usually just like you make up something to say where you were or what you were doing at a certain point in time like you're basically a liar and number eight the art of living in peace with what we can't change and that's just like uh, accepting some things can't you can't change. And there's there'll be a lot of things about other people you can't change. Um, y you have to learn to accept some things. And the things you, you really shouldn't accept would be like if 
something they do is destroying part of your life or causing problems in your life, then it's possible that's not a good relationship that you want to have. So, um, there's certain things about other people or other groups that you're not going to be able to change and you'll have to accept that. So we're going to move down to see your partner as herself or himself. Anytime we see our partners as mother, father, sibling, or an early earlier partner, the result will be anger, sadness, or both. Stay in your present experience of that person. Do not look at their behaviors as what others have done or not done for you or to you. Your wounds are yours to heal. Expect no more from your partner than sympathetic, supportive love. You will have to work the necessary... You will have to do the necessary work to heal your pain. Um, right, and I, I guess this is mainly just kind of saying you don't want to um, see... It, this would be like your loving relationship partner. Like you're in a relationship with somebody to have a um, either a family relationship or just a sexual relationship, I guess you would say. And you don't want to, you know, look at this other person and see one of your parents because of the way that they, maybe they do something similar to what your parent did. And like you see your parent whenever they do that. You, so you want to try and avoid that because that's not your parent. They just maybe have the same habit. And maybe you could bring it up in a way that's like, hey, um, you know, my parent did this and it was kind of weird and you do it too. And so like... I just find it weird whenever you do it, maybe in a nice way, without being rude about it. Um, you know, it's hard to not, it's, it's hard to have something bad happen to you in your past and then not, you know, look, see that in, in situations that are going on like now. It, it's, it's really hard to do that. So, I think that maybe we, it's 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 one of those things where you have to realize that it happens and know that you will automatically try to associate like your brain will do it. You'll try to associate um, people from your past with people that are in your life now, and that could it could cause you to <clears throat> have like some preconceived notions about the person and um maybe you're like oh well the person from the past did this and it hurt me so this person is probably going to be like that too and that's they'll probably hurt me too but that might totally be wrong and that person the new person in your life is actually a good person and it's just the way that you perceive the situation because of your past so it's it's it, i'm not saying like don't use your past to learn from it but you also don't want to constantly think like the same things are going to happen again and again. It's possible they could, but it's most likely that they won't. Um, and then if you're, if you're in a loving relationship with another person, I mean, you, you can expect a lot from them, but you, you sympathetic support they they can they can they can feel sorry for you they can put themselves in your place and to, to understand how you feel but really they're their own person and sometimes um like the things that you go through in your personal life your your partner will feel for you but they're not you so they're not really going to completely understand or go through that with you you have to do that on your own be sympathetic and supportive of your partner. Do not try to change her or him. Change is something that cannot be enforced or expected. Trying to force change will cause anger and will be viewed as attempts at controlling your partner. These attempts at control can be taken as criticism and a linkage to the past. Do not bring out the laundry list of, of the past unresolved grievances do not globalize you always do this you always do that do not shame can't you think of anyone else but yourself do not judge or name call you're a slob check your anger and remember to see how your body is feeling 
If things get really heated, try to say, let's take a break and discuss this when we are calmer. If you end up continuing the argument or threaten your partner, the anger may be about the past, not the present. So stop and bring yourself back to the present. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through some of these. Do not bring out the list, the laundry list of the past, un, unsolved grievances. And this is gonna mostly be in like your partner relationship. You, you don't wanna have things that have happened, like, like if you had a fight in the past about something, it could have been something stupid, like they did something, they put the toilet paper roll on the, the roll backwards from the way that you think it should be put on there. And then later on, when you get into fights about cleaning up the bathroom, like you always bring up that, um, that one thing that they do, not, not to say like somebody's gonna do that, but that's just an example. And do not, it's, it's basically don't bring up the, the past, especially if you're using it as a weapon. Like if you're, if you're going to use it as an example to why this new situation might not be, might not look very like a good situation, like that's probably an okay thing. But as far as like bringing up, oh, like, um, oh, remember the time that you were flirting with, uh, so-and-so in front of me or something like that. So it's just, it's, it's just going to throw, throw fuel on the fire is all that's going to do. Do not globalize. You always do. So globalize is like applying it to your area around you. Um, well, when we when we argue, you you always ignore me. You always um, you give me the silent treatment, and you don't talk to me. So, and. Um, so it's like it's it's like they don't always do that maybe they do that sometimes for the arguments but they don't always do that so you don't want to globalize like you're always doing this maybe they do always do it and you're telling the truth too so it's kind of a double-edged sword there uh, do not shame can't you think of anyone else but yourself um yeah i i you know I'm, I'm really bad at doing all of these things and this is kind of a review for me to go back in and, and, re, and relearn some of this stuff because I, I'm kind of like I'm pretty bad at relationships myself so. <laughs> um, sh shaming this this kind of goes with the the emotional abuse uh, it's it's designed to um, make the person feel bad or upset by attacking their person or their, um, maybe their, their character, things that they do, their hobbies. Um, maybe, maybe they have a, a strange hobby they like to do and then you bring that up, you throw that in their face and so, it's that that's something that they do and it's not maybe it's it's maybe it's like a not a normal hobby but you still shouldn't make fun of them and can't you think of anyone but yourself um i think i think the idea of that comment alone was that the person saying it is kind of like thinking only of themselves and then putting projecting that onto the other person and causing them to feel shame because well, the person that is using that as a weapon obviously doesn't want to feel shame and he's trying to cause the other person to feel shame. So not a good thing if you want to have a good relationship. Don't make other people feel shamed about things. Do not judge or name call. You are a slob. And th that's, that's one of the hardest ones to to not do is to say mean things to other people whenever you get upset at them and it's you don't mean to do it even even with your loved ones like you might say something while you're mad and you don't mean it but it's really nasty and you shouldn't have said it so do not judge people don't name call them judging them would be like just 
looking at how they dress maybe or what, the, what how they look and assuming they're like this certain type like assuming that like I um, like I know how to work on electronics because I wear glasses like just because I wear glasses doesn't mean I'm smart it doesn't mean that I can't see <laughs> so that would be like somebody judging me thinking that I'm smart because I wear glasses even though I could might not be smart uh, check your anger so check your anger remember to see how your body is feeling and I'll, I'll probably go into that a little more later on too with um, like anger cues I think I have some stuff on anger cues and um, you could be you'll you'll know when you're angry like you'll feel hot and um, you, you might have like your blood pressure will go up or you'll feel like really released um, like you have a lot of energy and you're ready to do something so there's there's cues for uh, your body and if if you can remember to take that time see, I, I think the important thing is just remembering to stop and think and then try to go through feeling you know how, how do I how do I feel as far as um, emotions how does my body feel um, am, am I am I tense? Am I am I like tensing my hands by you know making my fists, um, things like that? So just remember, you can you can know um, some of the cues that you're going to be angry and you're going to be a jerk to somebody else as, as in, a, in a relationship. Um, you can say, if things get really bad, you can say, let's take a break and discuss this when we are calmer. And that's usually a good thing is just to calm down and then talk so that you're not, um, trying to talk while you're mad because you're probably going to continue just being a jerk or saying things that you don't mean. Um, if you end up continuing the argument or threaten your partner, the anger may be about the past, not the present. So stop and bring yourself back to the present. And that's just basically, um, it's possible that you're trying not to bring up uh, something from the past and throw it in their face, but at the same time, like the, the whatever the scenario was, it wasn't resolved. So you're, um, the past the anger that you're feeling now is about the past so that's basically just the whole idea there is don't threaten your partners whenever you're angry and then if you can know that you're angry and stop and feel some of the cues that could be like you're just a little mad but then you're like really really mad and you're about to like go and bust the car windows out or something so yeah you kind of want to Make sure to calm down there. Uh, relationship breakers. What are some of the things that have contributed to the downfall of your relationships past and present? Look at the list that follows and take a note of relationship breakers you or your partner practice or both of you. Check off the things that were or are present in your relationships or are sources of conflict or difficult behavior. Many of the following categories fit relationships that are not love relationships. Um, we're not going to cross any of these off. I'm just going to go through them. And these these are just things that will destroy relationships. And the, the information is kind of geared towards partner relationships. But these, these will basically destroy any relationship. Abuse and violence. Obviously, nobody likes being hit or yelled at or treated poorly in some other way. Um, treated like a slave or somebody to clean up after somebody adapting to change mm, that could be more towards um, like business employee type where things are changing and you're not able to keep up maybe you're um, getting a little older in the job that requires somebody that's younger and more fit so you're unable to adapt so the employer releases your employee employer employee relationship destroys it and you don't have the job anymore alcohol alcohol drugs um all addictive substances 
basically you no longer have dedication to your partner and you now have something else that you care in a similar way to your partner you care about um and that, that by that that means like it costs you money it takes up your time uh, it makes you act like a jerk to other people so definitely gonna mess up relationships career stress uh, if you work too much, it definitely will destroy your relationships. Uh, when I was younger, I remember that I worked a lot of hours, and I was after doing that for two years, I would say, working, f you know, f over 40 hours between 40 and 60. Your partner, if they don't see you much, they start to feel like you're not really in a relationship, and then they start to look for a new partner. So that could definitely break your relationship. Codependency. And that would be like one person depending too much on the other. And that could be for many different things. Um, money is usually one of the main things for codependency. Sometimes, sometimes some people, there, there's no money involved. But um, one person will just constantly want the other one to buy stuff. So they don't actually give them the money, they just give them to buy stuff. And it's it's not really, it's not, it's not that it's, it's just the person that has to constantly give probably feels like they give too much and the other person takes too much and so the relationship doesn't really work for both of them. Competition, if you're constantly trying to compete in the relationship, um, eventually somebody could get upset and not want to be a part of the relationship anymore. They just don't like the competition always. Maybe you use the competition by bringing other things in the way. Um, that would definitely destroy a relationship, especially if it was another person you brought in the way to cause competition. Control. Nobody likes being controlled, no matter what, what type of relationship situation. Mm, daytime TV. I, this was probably directed at, um, what do they call those? Um, it was the, the Jerry Springer era where everybody would get on TV and fight. And, you know, a lot of times, the, the if you pay attention, the situations, they're, they're kind of like, exaggerated but at the same time the talk show was using it as an example of um bad relationship breakers so but if you watch that for entertainment and then you think it's funny and you want to do those things obviously it's gonna mess up your relationship um denial denial could be of a, di a lot of different things but um could could be i guess in the turn in the sense of messing up relationships it would be denial of um maybe the things that you do wrong or your your outburst of anger or yelling or cursing or something like that you're just denying it and the other person doesn't like it so they don't want to be in a relationship differences in child rearing that that probably pops up a lot when um people have children there there could be many different things that one parent does that the other doesn't like and that could be um, eating certain things uh, buying certain types of clothing um, dressing a certain way and there's just there's a, there's a lot of um, different child rearing practices that can cause relationship problems one for me was um, trying when my my I would have the problem of my partner trying to have the baby in the bed and I was like I can't do this there's a baby bed there so there's a reason there's a baby bed um, disappointment uh, if you constantly disappoint your partner and you don't really try to make things better that would definitely cause problems and that could apply to a partner relationship or any any other type of relation relationship employee employer um, if you don't live up to keeping up with your tasks, maybe they just aren't going to want you to be employed there anymore. Drugs, the drugs went with the uh, alcohol. Um, a lot of times what happens is you tend to not 
have love for yourself or other people and you start to love this drug more so you, it doesn't really work for relationships so definitely gonna mess with them up emotional baggage um, this would be like things from your past uh, that caused you to have emotional stress this this could be uh, uh, like the situations from earlier talking about the way that um, people from your past treated you and then you see that in your new partner maybe they are doing the same things so you're right to see it but maybe you're seeing like something that is just made up in your head um, some some other emotional ba baggage could be things that you do um, uh, maybe like you cry a lot because you're constantly living in the past of some some of the events that you went through that could cause your partner to kind of back away from you a little bit not maybe not thinking that you're okay and that you're not okay and you need help um, it could be your emotional baggage from the way that people did treat you and you have some um, unresolved uh, psychological trauma so there is possible it's possible that it could mess up your relationship and you don't even know that you have the emotional baggage because it was from um, abusive relationships in your past family traditions there could be uh, differences in traditions like the way that th um, maybe the type of religion or practice that you your family has or, or follows versus the your partner that you've met and and the families don't get along and it causes problems uh, there could be other traditions certain maybe disagreements on certain holidays or something cause problems this this could also be work related um the the muslim community when 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 there started to be like a large amount of um people that practice Islam over here there there were um, disagreements with like family traditions and the school the way that the schools operated and some of um, well, let me see what else was it school and maybe some of the, um, the other religious practices that were done out in the open there were just disagreements and there was probably a um, refusal to even have a relationship between the groups that were disagreeing friends can break relationships um, if you have friends that um, influence you to do things you shouldn't be doing that will definitely cause problems with your partner if you have a job and you're you have friends that want you to hang out and drink until three in the morning and you got to be to work at six in the morning it's probably your employee employer relationship is not going to work out for you so got to be careful of the company you keep holidays um that one kind of goes with the religious beliefs and it'll, it'll you can have that inside the family or outside the family um if you had like um two people that were together and they had different their families traditional belief systems were different the holidays could be different and then they they don't agree on how to celebrate the differences and then it just destroys the relationship inability to compromise and that that's basically like getting along um letting sometimes you have to one person has to let go and give up to to make things work um, if you're unwilling to let go of some things to make your relationship work or if you're unwilling to um, not let go of everything that could also be an issue uh, that, that that would definitely destroy a relationship sometimes you just have to get along and let things go because uh, the other person might not want to change the way that they do certain things so you'll be able to compromise a little bit infidelity so I have infidelity so fidelity is faithfulness to a person cause or belief demonstrated by a continuing loyalty and support um, 
So that would be like you're not faithful to your partner, and this could be inside of marriage or outside of marriage. Um, it could be it could be employer related or government based as well, where you're not faithful. You're a um, you're like a spy for the uh, a different government, so you could be have infidelity that way. Um, but for the most part, this is for relationships that are sex relationships where people are having sex and this would be just cheating on your partner in some way, maybe flirting with other people, kissing them, um, touching them, or um, having sex with them. So not loyal and that is not a relationship. Jealousy, if you're too jealous, yes, sometimes people find that annoying. They don't want to be around you if you're too jealous. Um, so that goes both ways. You could either be the jealous person or the person that doesn't like jealousy. Lack of commitment. And if you're committed to your partner, usually you'll show that with you know some, some signs. Um, you might hold their hand or buy them certain things on certain holidays or their birthday. So if you don't do those things, then it basically, uh, some people see that as you are not committed and you don't care. So you know, lack of self-esteem. This could just be that you don't, one person doesn't like that the other person um, sees themselves as low or less than other people so it's it just it, it it doesn't it makes the relationship not last because you want your partner to feel good about themselves and to think good thoughts about themselves and no matter what you do they they've been taught to not have self-esteem so it makes you not want to be with them um it could be you, you could be drawn to them too so who knows Lack of trust, definitely gonna mess up relationships. If you can't trust people, you don't have a relationship or your relationship will go bad and they will possibly lie to you or steal to you. And lies is the next relationship breaker. And obviously if you're not honest with other people, they're not gonna, unless they don't care, unless you have the relationship where it's like, you're just in this to make money you don't care about the personal life so if they tell you lies if they were to lie to you about your their personal life it doesn't matter anyway because you don't have that relationship with them all you want is to, for them to help make money and you could care less about anything that they lie about anyway unless they steal from you then that's lying about where the money is so that would be a little different than you would want to break the relationship name calling Definitely nobody likes to be called nasty names or anything bad. Um, neediness, some people just constantly need things. They don't want to get them themselves. It could be a relationship breaker because they don't, don't try to get their needs themselves. They try to just use other people. Um, no fun. Maybe, maybe the person likes to go out and do a lot of things that are fun and they just don't find you entertaining so they don't want to be with you after a little while uh no sex i'm not sure on that one i guess if like the person was purposely withholding not having sex with you for long periods of time you could consider that like um, um a relationship breaker but also like maybe it's some sort of form of power and control too Personal infringement, uh, and I think this is like when people um, kind of step into your personal space, they infringe upon your personal boundaries. So, some people don't like that. They don't like when you walk up and kiss them on the cheek or something, and they feel um, they feel like their personal space has been violated, and they might not want to have a relationship with you. Uh, their relatives could cause problems in the relationship and you just don't want to deal with it. Maybe they want to hang out with them too much. Maybe they, ha maybe they go and drink with them or do drugs with them. So relatives could be a problem. Setting expectations. 
if, if you're always going to expect things from people and they don't live up to it, obviously you're going to feel let down and that could make you not want to be in the relationship. But at the same time, if somebody sets expectations too high for you and you don't want to meet those, then you might not want to be in the relationship as well. So that goes both ways. That's the two-edged sword again. Uh, social training. Social training, I guess, if it's a relationship breaker, that's going to be like, um, maybe they try to tell you how to act in, in certain situations involving other people, like whenever you're out and about, or if you go to a party or a gathering, like they're like, oh, you got to act like this, you got to say these things, because we're together, and it's some people are not going to want to go through that, so it's going to be a relationship breaker. Staying power, I, I think what they meant here was just the willingness to stay. Um, it probably also falls under one of the other ones, just um, being uh, committed and not not committing infidelity. So staying, staying through the rough times even though things aren't good. So now we move to relationship makers. As the saying goes, it takes two to tangle, so does it take two to make any relationship grow and prosper. In a negative environment, most relationships are under great stress. Only through communication, compromise, and perseverance will the relationship last. Some of the attributes of a good relationship are unique to a love relationship, while others fit everyday friends. Take a look at the following and see how your relationships measure up. So it really does take two to tango if one person um, is only trying to grow and make the relationship better it's probably not really going to work out for very long it might work for a little while until that person gets stressed out from giving it their all and the other person not giving anything uh, communication is very important for all relationships it doesn't matter if it's inside the family or outside the family you have to talk and make sure that people understand what's going on and um, some of the expectations even though you don't you don't want to set those too high or too low uh, compromise is just are you willing to give up some some things on how you feel to get along with the other person without giving up too much or all because you don't want to give up too much Persevering is just staying through the rough things and making the relationship last. Um, most things apply to both love relationships and uh, friend relationships or society relationships. So now the first relationship maker is accepting and that could just be accepting of um, some of that maybe like you're like I was saying about the your partner's hobbies if it's a partner relationship you're just accepting that they do this thing they spend their money on this thing and um, you can't really change it because that's something they like doing maybe one could be fingernail polish and makeup some girls just collect it and if you're with a person that does that maybe you just accept that that's how they spend their money and even though you think it's a waste you don't say anything about it you just accept that that's what they do and that's what they like doing um affirming i guess this is backing up what you say by either um following it up with words like maybe i love you or i care or um, this could also be maybe um, affirming through doing doing things for the other person, following through. Oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna come and I'm gonna help you cook the Thanksgiving dinner would be a good one because you don't want to put all that off on one person if there's gonna be like a family gathering. So not only do you say it, but then you affirm it by coming and doing it. Um, being, I guess what they're saying is just. If you want a relationship to last and work, you got to be there and be available for the other person. Um, that would be in the family setting or partner or outside of the family. Caring. If you care, you're obviously going to show that by doing certain things. You're going to say it. 
and then you're going to follow up by um, doing certain actions that could be like maybe buying small gifts without going overboard and spending too much on gifts because um, that could happen too where you uh, over over shower the person with stuff and then they don't like it possibly they do like it possibly they don't commitment you not only have to um, say you are committed you have to be committed by not doing the things like not flirting with other people outside of your relationship if it's a partner relationship if you're committed to your work you're not going to try to turn um, customers away to another business that's similar to the one that you're working for common child rearing practices uh, this could be like where the disagreements turn to one person is willing to let go of doing uh, something a certain way maybe it's feeding the child a certain way certain items have to be on their plate uh, one person gives up doing it a certain way in favor of the other parents so you try to um, make common practices together for that and that is will help to make your relationship work commonalities i think that this is sharing your common space and your common items um a lot of things get shared there might be certain things that don't get shared um like your toothbrush is a good one uh you could if it was like your partner's like hey i forgot mine but I, I i would probably just go without brushing my teeth for that day rather than use somebody else's toothbrush but um commonalities could be sharing the spaces uh maybe you maybe you work together to dedicate like this is my drawer that's their drawer over there and we agree to that because i it's not that i don't want that person touching my items it's just like i want to know where they are whenever i want to use them so definitely um working together on sharing your common spaces or your common items is definitely going to help to keep your relationship working communication is the most important thing probably if you don't talk and if you're not willing to be open and discuss things that might cause problems um sometimes just making sure that if something's going to be changed in the relationship or in the way that tasks are done that the uh, communication is there and both people know it's being changed so communication is very important doing falls under that, that that's like the caring where you um you sh and affirming where you show your uh you show your love or your dedication to your relationship by going out of your way maybe not going out of your way but by doing the actions that would be related to showing that you care at work it could just be uh, making sure that your area is clean like it's supposed to be and that you greet the customers in a friendly way like the um, employer requests for you to do expressing feelings at deep level and that that's something that you only want to do with somebody you trust and the partner you're like your loving relationship partner you're you you do want to find times like you don't want to do it at all times or in public but maybe like you want to make time where at night you're talking and so that's you want to express some of your deeper thoughts and feelings and there, that could go a lot of different ways um you could have feelings about situations going on at home or the relationship itself or maybe you want to maybe you want to describe like the how much you love the person you want them to understand that like not only do you love them but you care for them as if they were like another part of you or something like that um fidelity that was being faithful to the partner and making sure that you're not flirting with other people cheating by having sex with them or something like that definitely important to making a relationship work financial goals and practices if one person 
wants to spend all their money on alcohol and the other one wants to invest in stocks so that they can have nicer things a few years later in life uh, definitely that they have different financial goals and practices and they're probably not going to get along for very long um, it's possible you would want to make financial goals and practices with your the person the person or the people in the relationship if it's like your partner relationship you would be making the um goals and practices with the with the person if it's a family it could be like family related goals and practices but definitely um if you work together it helps to keep the relationship going fun and friends obviously if you're not fun people won't want to be around you unless they're the same way they don't really care for certain activities um, maybe your partner doesn't like friends that have any problems like drinking or smoking and they ask you not to go around them and you don't so that you show that your relationship is more, more important so that could go both ways where you could have um, allowing each person is allowed to have friends and hang out with them um, in order to make the relationship work and for both people to get along maybe they don't like that and they don't want pe each other doing that could go both ways good self-esteem that's always important for everything and I guess if you don't see if if you think low about yourself or you don't see yourself as being anything you, you're your partner that's going to reflect on from you onto the way that your partner sees you so you definitely don't want to always make them think that you're you don't think much of yourself because then maybe that's gonna make them want to push you away like you're you're not gonna do anything to change so i don't want to be around you or something like that but definitely you want to have good self-esteem about yourself and you want to show that by being positive and being friendly and that will help to make relationships better uh, obviously if you walk up to somebody and you say something like oh man i'm so stupid look at what i did they're gonna be like what's wrong with this person um having for relationships i'm, I'm not really sure um that, that could apply to a lot of things. Maybe it's having time, making time to uh, spend with the person. I'm not sure exactly what how having made it onto the list. It's an action, so if you're um, trying to stay with somebody for a long time, uh, maybe having time to spend doing something fun or having time to just go visit them and watch movies. Uh, those things will definitely help to keep your relationship working out. Honesty. Nobody wants to be lied to unless it's uh, a relationship where honesty doesn't matter. But for the most part, everybody does. Everybody wants honest people to be honest and not lie to them. Humbleness. Don't need to be right. And if you th that that falls under the competition one so if you always need to be right and you're kind of in competition with the other person and they don't really it, it could cause them to like back away so just being humble and not only do you not need to be right but you don't need to like say it out in the open or like rub it in their face in any way so it's it's like you're keeping keeping your thoughts to yourself so that it doesn't make your partner feel unwanted um integrity is integrity is like uh, integrated character and this would be you you um you don't smoke because of you have certain beliefs on it you don't drink because of certain beliefs um 
You eat eat with your family. You eat dinner with your family as a family. Even your even like um, extended family outside of just mom and dad and kids. And so integrity. Part of that would be like you feel like um, family din dinner is really important. So that's part of in, in the integrity that you have. Your the in integrated character. Uh, it could be having respect for the other person. You respect them in a certain way. You treat them a certain way. So, and that's because of uh, you were taught to be that way. So, in a integrated character. Um, if you're a good person and you show that and do, and do things that show that, then it will make a relationship better or make it work. Maybe it won't make it better, but make it work. Intellectual match. I guess if your intelligence level with your with your immediate partner, like your loving partner, if your intellectual intellectual level is like way different, you, you might not um, after after meeting you might not get along because you feel like this person has nothing in common with you. So you you kind of want to be on the same level. To make the relationship work out better um, doesn't necessarily have to be I'm not really I, this also kind of goes with the competition thing which could break relationships so you don't want to like act like you're too smart and throw it in their face um, but usually you want your person your partner especially if they're close to you, to be on the same intellectual level as you, like to know about the same things and understand the same things, or similar things anyway. Intimate. And some people might not be intimate, and then some are. That's kind of a hard one there. Uh, I, I think maybe showing some love through intimacy, like kissing and holding hands, is probably a good way to make a relationship work but and to make it last but at the same time some people don't always like that so you have to work that out with the person um, to me I think it's important I, I, I think it's important that uh, my partner show that they care and that they love me by being intimate and but I don't really think that that should be something that should be done out in the open and so that's a private thing for me um, loving is um, it kind of goes with caring so if you if you love the person you care about them you'll um, you'll go out of their way out of your I'm sorry you'll go out of your way to make sure that you affirm the love by maybe saying that you love them and showing them maybe you buy them some small gifts you take them out for to dinner on certain days or certain holidays or something like that definitely going to make your relationship better if you do those things to um, show that you love loyalty mm, I don't really think anybody likes being cheated on maybe maybe some people are not maybe loyalty is not as important they don't I don't know I think that a relationship especially like a, if, if you're a couple two people um, loyalty is pretty important because you don't want other people interfering with your relationship and if one person is loyal and the other is not then it's possible that you could end up with other people in your relationship which will destroy it Respect is important. You don't want to say mean things or be disrespectful to somebody that you care about, especially if you're trying to have a, some sort of relationship with them. Um, now, there, there, there could be a certain amount of uh, playing that would um, bring in disrespect. Like, it could be at work, a couple of employees playing around, being disrespectful, throwing stuff at each other. It could happen at home where the two people are wrestling around, playing around. So there's, you, you would want to respect the person's private space and not hurt them in that sense if you're playing around. So you still have respect for them, but you are kind of violating their, being disrespectful by violating their space. So kind of a two-edged sword there, but 
being respectful to the other person and showing that by um, uh, maybe saying like thank you or I love you or I care about you or um, not standing in their way, not like making messes on purpose for them to clean up. It's just <clears throat> respect goes like many different ways. But I, w I would say it's mostly about being having respect for the other person in the sense of um, not violating their person or their personal space in any way. Responsibility, uh, definitely. If you're not responsible and you're in a relationship, your partner could see that as like something that they don't want to deal with. They don't like it. They feel like they're going to have to carry, around, carry you around like a child and clean up after you. So definitely... Um, you want to be responsible and do your part and show up on time if you're trying to have a, a long-term relationship that works. Sharing, um, sharing isn't uh, always necessary, but I guess if uh, sharing is caring. So if you care, you're going to share your stuff and not um, tell the other person that they're not allowed to touch anything or uh, don't. they're not allowed to um, use your stuff in any way. And it could be, you know, it could be something important that you share too. So you have it, um, maybe, maybe it's a, a vehicle that um, both partners are sharing. And if you didn't do that sharing, the relationship would not only get messed up, but uh, you could be out in the streets without a place to live. Supportive. And that probably goes under um, with affirming and uh, showing commitment by showing your love through uh, actions. Um, so supportive. There's there's many different ways you could support the person. It could be through financial support. It could be through. Um, emotional support uh, like you maybe maybe your grandmother's old and when you go talk to her like you grab you hold her hand and you give her a kiss on the cheek and you tell her that you love her because you're supporting her that you want her to feel cared about and um, you want to make sure that she knows that you love her so many different types of support that one kind of is a two-edged sword in the sense that you can go overboard on being supportive and then create some codependency problems. So um, be supportive without overdoing it, definitely. And the next one is trust. That goes with loyalty and honesty. If you can't be trusted because you lie and steal and cheat, then this probably not going to relationship's not going to work out. Um, vulnerability. When somebody's opening up and sharing their like really really deep feelings with you, they be they 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 become vulnerable in a way. They've opened their heart up, and you then know things about them that other people might not know. So they've they've given they become vulnerable to you and if you violate that trust then your relationship probably won't work so you definitely want to be aware that um, people are vulnerable and uh, if you violate that their trust in the and whatever they are vulnerable in, your relationship might not work out and that's it for the relationship section um, Thank you for having me and letting me teach you this topic. And I will see you next time on Mike's Place. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked it. And subscribe and share the content with other people so that I can get um, people to view my content. Because this is not only, um, it's not only important, but... Uh, it's really important to me and especially to share it with other people because I think that once you learn something, if you're unable to share it, then you don't really understand it and you, you don't really have a sense of owning 
what you learned because you're unable to share it and repeat it back to others. So thank you and have a good day. See you next time.